So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bubble print in Zeiss Calypso with PyWeb. So essentially at the end of this, you'll see how to make this drawing. You'll have these live bubbles that show you whether the tolerance is red, yellow, or green. The yellow meaning that it's uh, close to being out of tolerance, but not quite out of tolerance. And then on the second page here, you'll have the, the normal PyWeb report. Let me exit out of that. I'm going to do this with a CAD model. So I've already got it programmed and obviously it's a very, very simple model. Now the most important thing here is to put the bubble number in the beginning of your title here. So you could put it at the end, um, it doesn't, you could do it either way, but in order to get it to show up in the bubble, you want the number, uh, the bubble number to be separate. I mean, you could just delete. Um, the C distance here or whatever the nomenclature is, but then it's difficult to figure out what kind of characteristic you have, right? So that's all set up and you'll see where that comes in in a second. Now the next thing I'm going to do is turn on the warning limits. Now if you notice I've got red, green, and then yellow, which just lets you know again that it's close to being out of tolerance. So we're going to go to Resources, Characteristic Setting Editor, and then this is going to be under report and then warning limit in percent. So I've already got this set. Normally, these will all be set to 100%. So if I go to selected features here, shift, select them all, it'll probably look like this uh, if you haven't already set this. So I'm just going to set them all to 50%. Now, you could set them to 75% or whatever you want. So this just gives you that cool yellow light instead of just being red or green. So I'm good with that. Now I'm going to go to a measurement tab. We're going to go to multiple report and we want to create a new report. So, so what you'll probably have here, if you haven't really messed with PyLab a lot as the standard protocol, we don't want that. What I'm going to do is go down to the three dots. I'm going to select standard protocol and then I'm going to hit the pencil. Now it's not going to let me create a new template and put it right in the Zeiss folder. We've got to either put it in generic templates or a measurement plan specific template. The measurement plan specific, just like it sounds like it stays with this measurement plan. The generic templates you can use with any measurement plan. It doesn't matter much right now. I'm going to choose measurement plan specific. And then just save it wherever you normally, uh, you know, save your files for Zeiss Clip. So I'm going to hit save there. Now, that actually doesn't make it the standard. We still have to go back in here to the three dots, measurement plan specific, and then choose the one you just made up. So I'm going to hit select. And now it's going to show up here, and that's going to be our default PyWeb report. But that's all we need to do in here for now. So I'm going to hit OK. Now when I hit that pencil, PyWeb should open up. So I'm going to hit maximize here. Now the first thing I want to do is pull this taskbar over. So if you notice, it'll, it'll come in like this where everything's stacked. If you pull it over, uh, you can see more of what's going on right here. Probably didn't need to go that far. There we go. Double is good for me. So. There's a couple tabs right here and we'll get to most of them in this video. First, I want to go to pages. I want to click on master and then I'm going to go up here to new page and that's going to put us a new report page right uh, to the right of master. So what that does when we report uh, after we run a program, this report page comes up first and then your normal PyWeb report. So. What we're going to do here is put our bubble drawing that we're going to make in a second. Now, Zeiss won't let you import a PDF into PyWeb, so we need uh, a JPEG or a TIFF file. Uh, what I did here was just use Snipping Tool to snip out of a PDF my drawing. Now, I, I did this on a 4K screen, that's why it's uh, it looks so giant here that I'm recording on a 1080 screen. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to right-click, Copy. Now, you could save this file, but with Snipping Tool, it's just as easy to just copy it. And then I'm going to go into PyWeb, click in here, Control V brings it right in without having to do any extra file management. Now, 
I'm just going to size this up. All right, typical Windows tools. We could rotate this to make it bigger. So if I right click on report page, I just come down here to rotate page format. We could do that. The problem is this header right here has to be fixed because it doesn't automatically fill in this extra area. So I'm going to leave it um, just portrait format. All right, so now I'm going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing. And let's go ahead and give this a test to make sure it shows up correctly before we do any bubbling. So I'm going to come over here to save. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go into my program characteristics. I'm going to run the program. Uh, I'm not going to check clear existing results because I have uh, the data I want in here. Hit start. And this is all I wanted out of that. Uh, just to see that our drawing comes up first. We go to page two. This is going to be our normal PyWeb report. I'm going to exit out of there. I'm happy with that. I'm going to open PyWeb back up and let's get into adding some bubbles to our drawing. We're going to go over here to Toolbox. I'm going to go to Reference. I'm just going to drag and drop a reference circle in here. And I'll just make it a little bigger so it's easier to see. And of course, it's got a question mark because we haven't told it what to do yet. What we're going to do is link this to our characteristic name. And then we're going to apply kind of a conditional formatting so that it'll show us the right color depending on whether it's intolerance or out of tolerance or close to being out of tolerance. All right, so I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go to variable, data provider, characteristic, and then name. And I just click right here on name. Now, nothing happened, right? What we have to do is come over here to the data provider tab and then we choose one of these. This is going to link that variable to the data coming out of your program. So all of these should correspond to, I'm not going to open the program real quick, all your characteristics going on over here. So I'm going to select this first one, caliper distance. And if you notice, it populates right here. So we've got that data linked. Now the problem is it's got the whole title from our program, 1C distance. And we don't want that. We just want it to read the number one. Now, you know, you could just type the number one in there, but then it wouldn't be linked to the data and we wouldn't be able to conditionally format it to give us a color depending on the tolerance. So how we're going to do this, I'm going to select this reference sphere, control C, control V, and I'm going to copy it. Okay. I'm going to right click, go to variable, and we're going to use a string operation and I want left. So what we're essentially going to do here is show only the one and then a space and then it'll take away that C distance. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. I've got C left here. I'm going to come over here to my properties and this shows us the code going on behind the, uh, you know, the, the graphical user interface here. So I've got our string operator selected. If I select this, I'm going to click right here and name. And this is what the program is calling up for the name. If I click here left, this is the, the code for the name. So what we want to do is put the code for the name right here. And then we're going to put a two right here to tell it to only keep the two characters to the very left. Let me show you what I mean. And if you're lost, it's, it's okay. Hopefully it makes sense in a second. I'm going to copy this control C. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select just these two quotations control V. And now it doesn't do anything, right? What I've got to do is enter in a number here. So it, what it's saying is it's getting rid of all the strings to the left except for whatever this number is. So except zero, it just gets rid of everything. If I punch in two, it's going to leave us two spaces. Now you could just as easily use one and I'll show you that real quick. And it'd be the same. You would make it two if you have, you know, less or a one to 99 bubbles or I'm sorry, 10 to 99 bubbles. That way, you know, you don't have to do the code twice. All right. 
there's probably a better way to do it. That's just how I know how to do it. The good news is you only have to do this once per report here. I'm going to delete this first one. Now, we're going to jazz this up a little bit, and we're just going to copy it and change the data provider to bubble this whole thing up. So to make it have a conditional formatting, I'm going to scroll down here to background style. We're going to choose status color. Now, it looks like it didn't do anything, right? There's no color. If we go up here to preview, it shows us what it's going to do. So you can see how it's filled in now. Okay. So now it gets super easy. I'm just going to select this control C control V and start placing these. And I'm just going to hit control V as I go along. So one for the diameter, one for the position control V again, put one over here about this dimension. I'll move this over a little. Now I'm going to select this Got to go to data provider. So this one's correct. It's for caliper distance one. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to change it to caliper distance. Caliper distance two here. The diameter. Make sure you unselect the previous one and it'll show up blank. Right. And then the last one for the position. And we're all set. That's that's really all there is to it. Now, of course, it's a super simple drawing, but you can kind of copy and paste and move along and bubble up a drawing pretty quick. So I'm going to hit preview real quick and we can see the same colors from our program are going to show up in our bubbles on this drawing. So I'm going to exit out of here. I'll go back. Well, I'm going to save this, of course. going to open Calypso. I'm going to run the program and their bubble print shows up immediately. So this can be super handy. You know, some people just want to see the, a visual representation of the drawing and what's out of spec and what's not. This is a lot easier for somebody to look at than that default Pi web, right? This bubble drawing links it directly to the actual drawing. Now, there's more to PyWeb, and hopefully I can make some more videos soon, but this is just a, a quick tutorial on making a nice bubble print that's kind of interactive. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Uh, if there's any optimization for PyWeb that you know, please uh, share in the comments as well.